And there are all sorts of problems when it comes to finding antiderivatives or integrals. Um, we're going to tackle with, we'll tackle one such problem where you cannot find an explicit expression for the indefinite integral, so we use approximations. Now we're going to tackle another problem. So, so far when you find indefinite integrals, the functions have been continuous, well behaved, they're very nice, and they're restricted to a finite interval of the form a to b. In this case, we deal with cases when we can let go of these restrictions. So type 1, first let's deal with infinite integrals or intervals, meaning um, the interval over which you integrate is now allowed to go from a finite number to an infinite number. So let's say you have y equals 1 over x squared. Here's the graph. That, that's what it looks like. Now imagine I want to find the area above the x-axis, below the curve, and to the right of x equals 1, but all the way up to infinity. Now we know this graph never touches the x-axis, so there's always some area. But the question is, if I, is this area, is this finite or infinite? Now one could argue that, well, depends on how close it gets to the x-axis. So it's very hard to say what is happening here, and we have to do an analysis. Now area is the same as finding the integral. So this, in a sense, what we want to know is what is 1 to infinity integral of 1 over x squared dx. Now as x goes to infinity, it can be the case that the area keeps increasing until it is infinity, but it may not. So we have to check. So to check that, we introduce a dummy variable t. Now we say, let's say I decide to stop at some point t. Now what's the area then? Well, then it's 1 to t 1 over x squared dx. Uh, which becomes negative 1 over x, 1 minus 1 over t. So, for example, if t is 2, then the area is 1 minus half, which is 1 half. If t is 4, then the area is 1 minus 1 fourth, which is 3 fourth. And this should make sense because it's 0 0.5 and then 0 0.75. So, if you, you're moving t to the right, right, as t increases, as t increases, the area should increase. Now, we can reframe the question of 1 to infinity 1 over x squared dx is the same as 1 to t of 1 over x squared dx, but letting t go into infinity. And now under the limit, 1 minus 1 over t just becomes 1. So the area is finite and is equal to 1. So very interesting that when you do this, the area comes out to be 1. <laughs> Now, in general, here are some rules. If a to t fx dx exists for every number t more than a, then a to infinity fx dx can be solved as a to t and letting t go to infinity. Similarly, if t to b exists for every number less than b, then negative infinity to b fx dx can be written as this particular limit. Now the improper integral a to infinity fx dx and negative infinity to b fx dx are called convergent if the limits above exist as finite numbers. Meaning if the limit is finite then it is convergent and it is divergent otherwise meaning it's infinite. And then if both a to infinity and negative infinity to a are convergent then you can even find the area over the entire domain negative infinity to infinity by splitting it along a. Now you recall the property of definite integrals is you can split. And this sort of makes sense, um, a rough sketch, uh, let's say this. Integral a to b is this area and integral b to c is this area. So if you add these, you would get the area from a to c. So it makes sense. Now what about 1 over x? Uh, let's do the same thing. End up with log t which is infinity. So no, it is not converging. So that's interesting because 1 over x has a similar shape but it's just not as steep. So in case of 1 over x, if you take this area, even though it's going close, this area is infinite for 1 over x. But if you take 1 over x squared, which is 
slightly more steep then this area is then is only one big difference between one and infinity there right Uh, so you want to evaluate negative infinity to zero x times e to the x now recall um, you have to use um, integration by parts so first of all you change this into a limit integrating by parts you get negative t e to the t minus 1 plus e to the t now let's analyze this that's a constant part leave it as it is e to the t goes to zero as t goes to negative infinity because remember t to the negative large number is 1 over e to the large which becomes 0. Now what about negative t e to the t? Or we can rewrite this as negative t divided by e to the negative t. This trick should remind you of L'Hopital and indeed that's why we did this because it's infinity over infinity I can take derivatives and I end up with 0. So this integral is 0 minus 1 plus 0 which is negative Now the next example is a very common type of question where you're trying to find say for what values of p does this integral converge now meaning converge means that when you find the limit it should come out to be a finite number so we go through the process 1 to t and now we end up with this particular limit now let's analyze this term inside over here now, if p is more than 1 then p minus 1 is positive so as t goes to infinity t raised to p minus 1 goes to infinity because it's positive power now if a number goes to infinity then its reciprocal goes to 0 so this limit is 1 over p minus 1 which is finite so it is convergent when when p is more than 1 if p is less than 1 then it's negative so this goes to infinity and so it is divergent uh, But we already found that p equals 1 case is divergent. So in general, if p is more than 1, it is convergent. And if p is less than or equal to 1, it is divergent. Okay, we do the second case in the next video.